be nervous about? Who's nervous? Oh, not you. Naturally, no intelligent man is going to be trapped by a silly little machine called a lie detector. I got nothing to be trapped about. That registers heartbeat, change of pace and breathing, perspiration. Funny having a woman running this thing. I don't see anything funny about it. I happen to be a graduate psychologist as well as a deputy district attorney. That's what I like about you guys in the DA's office. You hate yourselves. But to get back to running this thing, what happens if you get a lug in here who isn't a gentleman like me? And he just pokes you in the nose and beats it, huh? What then? I've had a lot of experience with lugs, Mr. Ashton. Now, suppose you let me ask the questions. Shoot. Your name is Lester Ashton, isn't it? Yes. And your pals call you Les, don't they? That's right. Let's see, you're about uh, 32 years old. Why, yes. 34. All right, then. 35 and a half. The questions I'm about to ask will all have reference to one particular event. The night of March 15th. That was about eight months ago. Maybe I don't remember that far back. Were you in the apartment of a young woman living on South Kenmore at any time during the course of the evening? I might have been. You don't remember? Yes, I was there. The girl's name was Christine Allen, a law school graduate. That's right. And what was your position at the time? The same as now. District attorney, and you know it. And didn't you, as district attorney, promise this Christine Allen if she'd come into your office as a deputy, you'd give her a chance as a prosecuting attorney within six months? Well, sort of. I mean... Yes. Do you realize I've been here eight months? Yes, but Chris, we've been all through that. It Isn't doesn't... Isn't it true that you never intended to keep that promise? No. Get this darn thing off me and let me explain. Not until I find out what I want to know. But honey... Isn't it true that you gave me a job here in the belief that I'd get tired of the law business within those first six months and marry you? No. That's not true. Not exactly, anyhow. Why does this have to happen to me? I meet a beautiful girl, I fall in love with her. And all I want her to do is lead a normal life. Stay home and grow rose bushes and kids. And she wants to be a lawyer. I am a lawyer. All right, but why? What do you want a career for? Because that's what I studied for. And no man's going to talk me out of it or stop me until I've at least had a crack at it. No matter how much I love him. Then you do love me. Oh, no, sit back now. You'll wreck the works. Want to ask me some more questions? No. I'm going to give you the answers. And here's number one. What's this? My resignation, as of now. Oh, Chris, that's ridiculous. You can't do that to me. Chris, wait. Where are you going? I hope you take the job I should have taken when I came here to work for you. With Bill Crane? With Bill Crane. Anything wrong, Chief? No. Everything's just fine. Working for Mr. Crane? Oh, yes. Do you know where he is? No. You a friend of his? Yes. Why? And I don't mind telling you, he ain't in much these days. And even when he's in, he's out, if you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. But if you're implying... Look, that... I'm a friend of his, too. I know he's no booze hound, but he's sure been soaking it up lately. Oh. Well, I'll try and catch him at his apartment. Yes. Morning, Anna. Morning, Miss Allen. Mr. Crane in? No, ma'am, Miss Allen, he isn't. <laughs> Where's Mrs. Crane? He might at least seal the bargain. Look, baby, just the $500, that's all. I don't want any interest. Always stay hard to get, will you, Johnny? I have a feeling you'll be dull if you ever give in. $500. You got 500 bucks on the nose. Choice dealer in the 5th at Belmont. Oh, hello, Chris, darling. Marsha? This good-looking gangster is Johnny Lacker. Miss Allen. Hiya. I love you, honey. <laughs> Surprised. 
You playing the horses? That's the only way I can get Johnny to come and see me. He's cute, isn't he? Marsha, where's Bill? Did you try his office? Yes, he isn't there. That's the only place I can suggest. You see, my ever-loving husband moved out a week ago. And since then, he's been hiding in a brandy bottle. But why? That doesn't sound like Bill. He's never been a heavy drinker. And he's always been one of the hardest working lawyers in town. And one of the most jealous husbands. Why he ever married me and my career, I'll never know. It couldn't be because he loved you and thought you loved him. Of course I love him. Just not exclusively, that's all. <laughs> Come on in the studio. Oh, Marsha, how can you be such a nice person about some things and sorry <laughs> I though? All right, kids. Let's try it. Are you going to kiss him or bite him? Hold it, Paul. That's not it. That's terrible. Hello, Jonesy. Oh, oh, nice to see you, Chris. Oh, Have a chair. I trust you and Mr. Laika had an interesting conversation. 500 smackers on the nose of an animal called Choice Dealer. How do you like that? I pay her to make my advertising pictures. Then I have to come down here and take them myself while she plays the horses. It's the bookie I'm playing, darling, not the horses. Jealous? Desperately. Now, may we take some pictures? Come on, kids, take your positions. No, let's have a little warmth in this. This is supposed to sell suntan lotion, not insecticide. And Peggy, please remember, you're in the arms of the ideal man. You're falling in love with him. And all because he's covered his beautiful body with this perfectly delicious suntan lotion. Come on, try it again. They look more like people falling out of love than in love. My client will probably fall out of love with me when he sees this. What's the matter? Don't you love me, kitten? Maybe you'd like Mrs. Crane to show you how I should do it again. Or does she have to be in the dark room? I'd be very happy to, Peggy. Now, if you'll just get that feeling into it, it'll be perfect. Bill! Bill, you're drunk. Paul, will you please get him out of sure. here? I'll take care of him, Paul. I wanted to talk to him anyway. Oh, will you, dear? That's a good girl. Hello, Chris. I haven't seen you in a long time. No, that's right, Bill. So you're going to take me to lunch, aren't you? Okay, Come okay. On. I, I wanted to talk to Marsha, but she's busy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Marsha. You're forgiven if you'll just run along with Chris like a good boy. Call me soon, honey, and do try to get him to stop drinking. It only makes him unhappy. Come on, Bill. That's all for today, kids. Jonesy, straighten up the place. Mr. Marvin and I are going to lunch. Yes? Mr. Ashton, this is the law firm of Crane and Allen. Allen speaking. Crane and Allen, yes. What can I... Crane and Allen? Chris. I just wanted you to be the first to know, darling. Oh, yes, it's official. I'd have my partner confirm it, only... Uh... Only he's out at the moment. See you in court, Mr. Ashton. Chris, wait a minute. Chris! Yes, sir? Get me the residence of William Crane. I'll speak to Mrs. Crane. Right away. Here, drink this and life won't seem so grim. I'm serious, Marsha. I'll say you are. Okay, tell me all about it. Marsha, you're the only one who can help Bill. Give him another chance. He'll stay sober and tend to business. I'm sure of it. He's got a lot of pride, and this drinking business isn't like him at all. All right, Sir Galahad. Now let's have the real reason. That's it. He's throwing away the success it's taken him so long a time to get. And I don't think you want it on your conscience. You lawyers are all alike. Never use a direct, straightforward approach when you can circle the subject and grab it by the hind legs. I don't know what you're talking about but I know what you're talking about. Chris is going to work with Bill, right? Right. Now, when Bill's clicking, he has no more need of Chris or any other lawyer than the man in the moon. So? So you and I must band together to put Bill back on his feet, and Chris will run back to you. Think I'd make a good detective? Well, I was going to sum it all up like that. No. You just didn't give me time. But there's another angle, too. Chris is very easy to fall in love with, and Bill is very attractive. Right. She worked in my office and I fell in love with her. 
And now he's living up there and she's up there. And anything can happen. Hmm. Maybe you've got something there. How long since you've looked in this appointment book? Oh, a couple of weeks, more or less. You have a civil suit. Shannon versus Jones Mortgage Company. Set for trial day after tomorrow. Guess I'll just have to get a continuance on it until I can study the case. <laughs> oh, I wish I could have seen Les's face when I pulled that Crane and Allen line on him. I wish I could have seen my face when you pulled it on me. Care? No, what have I got to lose? And by the same token, what have you got to win? You'd be surprised. Hi, Les. I was looking for the law firm of Crane and Allen. But I guess I took a wrong turn someplace and got into the living room. Home sweet home. How cozy. Did you ever hear of waiting in the ante room of a private office? Professional liberty, my dear Alan. How are you feeling, Bill? Ah, uh, rugged. What did you come up here for? To wish you success in your new venture. Isn't that customary? Customary. But I'll bet you're up to something. No, really. Oh, yes. One other thing. I want you to have dinner with me. Well, I... Go ahead, Chris, please. After all, you seem to think you have something to celebrate in being my partner. Wait a minute. I don't trust him. Honey, you don't trust me. No. You're either going to try to talk me into something or out of something. You're wrong. Besides, I won't have a chance. This is going to be a foursome. Bill and Marsha. Marsha? Oh, no soap. I'm afraid you're a little behind in the Crane family's private life. I'm a little ahead of it, you mean. Have you seen her lately? Ran into her just a little while ago. And it was her idea that we all have dinner together. Oh, I hope you're not kidding. I wouldn't kid about a thing like that, Bill. I had a long talk with her. And I think, well, if you'd even meet her halfway, you know, lay off the liquor a little. Halfway? Well, if it makes any difference to her, I'll meet her all the way. I won't touch another drop of anything but straight ginger ale from now on. Well, anyway, the law firm of Crane and Allen accepts your dinner invitation with pleasure. Swell. See you later. Uh, Les, what time for dinner? Eight o'clock. We'll meet you at Marsh's. Right. What are you doing here? Hello, Bill. <laughs> I might ask you the same thing. Yes, except this happens to be my apartment, and you seem to be making yourself very much at home in it. Oh, Marcia went out for a while, and she told me to fix myself a drink before I left. Have one? No, thanks. Well, maybe a straight ginger ale. Oh, good. Sorry if I sounded like the jealous husband. It's all right, Bill. As a matter of fact, I, uh... You're sober, aren't you? Of course I'm sober. Why? Oh, I can talk to you when you're sober. What do you want to talk about? Marcia. Why should I talk to you about my wife? Your wife? Do you think you've been acting like a husband lately? After all, you gave up that job. I don't see that that's any concern of yours. Don't you? Bill, Marcia and I are in love with each other. You mean you're in love with her? No, I mean with each other. You could simplify matters by giving her her freedom. I'm anxious for it. Why doesn't she ask me herself? She's waiting for you to get back on your feet. I get tired of waiting. I don't believe it. She'll have to tell me. I could give you proof, Bill, but I don't like the idea. It certainly makes a heavy out of me. Let's have it.
Maybe they're not answering the door. Blame them. All right, Mr. Cupid, what now? Somebody must be home. Let's go in. Oof. Marcia? Maybe they've already gone on that second honeymoon. Oh, they certainly would have left us a note. Maybe they're in the studio. I'll look in there. Police in the corner. Ginger ale. What was it Bill said about drinking straight ginger ale? Bill, you're not thinking he did it. Why, lots of people drink ginger ale. If Bill had been here, he would have waited for us. He was here all right. I'll have to have him picked up. Les, wait. Let me call and talk to Bill first. I can't do that. But why? Bill is my partner and he's your friend. I can't help myself, Chris. I've got a job to do. It wouldn't make any difference if he were my brother. This is Les Ashton. Give me homicide. Bill. Oh, thank goodness you're here. You're a little late, Miss Allen. Late for what? A little late to break the news to Mr. Crane. The DA told us you'd be here. Marsh is dead. Yes, I... I just came from there. You weren't going away, were you? We met him at the elevator with that bag. And he was quite surprised to hear that his wife had been murdered, he said. May I talk to him alone, please? I'm sorry. No. You mean he's under arrest? Are you kidding? Les, what's the idea? What's the idea of what? I just came from my office, and your bloodhounds, Burke and Faber, are there again, and they've practically torn the place apart. They're trying to find Bill's gun. There's a record of one registered to him. All right. He admitted he had one. He also told you he didn't know where it was. Don't you believe him? I don't know. I only know that I have even more reason than you have to want to see him out of this. If I hadn't sent him up to see Marsha. Then you do think he killed her. What else can I believe with the evidence against him? But, Les, why, you and Bill have been friends for years. You know him. He couldn't kill anyone. Look, honey, it's all right for you to go by intuition. As a friend, I do the same thing. But I'm the district attorney, and I have to go by evidence. Number one, Bill was in Marsh's apartment. Number two, he drank himself into a state where even he doesn't remember exactly what happened. Three, he was caught trying to run away after the murder. All right, Mr. Prosecutor. But you haven't stated a motive for the murder. Bill and Marcia were making up. You said so yourself. I was wrong. From Marcia to Paul Marvin? Read it. Oh, Les, how awful. It certainly doesn't help Bill any. He's coming in now. Want to stay? Certainly. Hello, Bill. Hello, Chris. Sit down, Bill. You can wait outside back. Yes, sir. How do you feel, Bill? I'm all right. I have a letter here that Marsha wrote to Paul. Where'd you get it? Paul gave it to me yesterday. What a rotten thing to do. You can't blame him. We were talking about Marsha's and my separating. I demanded proof that she wanted to. So he let me read the note. What then? Paul left. 
Well, that's about as far as I can remember. The note, taking a bottle out of the, out of the bar, and wanting to get away from this town. That's not very helpful. I know, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. But we've got to worry about it. Don't you realize how serious this is, Bill? Yeah. Funny thing, though, nothing seems to mean very much to me now that marsha has gone. You feel differently. And for the time being, I'll represent you unless you want someone else. Doesn't really matter. Well, that's all, Bill. Unless you want to talk to Chris. Later, Chris. You serious about representing Bill? For the time being. Don't worry. He needs a better lawyer. He'll get the best. Uh, now, just a minute, Mr. D.A. Exactly what is our relationship to be on this case? Well, not too businesslike, honey. Uh-huh, good. Then, uh, as a pal, do me a favor. Give me the key to Marsha's apartment, huh? My mistake. Prosecuting attorney, defense attorney. Why do you care if I go up there and look around? Because we haven't finished looking around ourselves. Be reasonable. Doesn't seem to me you're being reasonable. So far, you've concentrated on Bill. When are you going to go to work on some of the others? In my own good time, and in my own way, Miss Ellen. But you aren't doing anything. Have you questioned Jonesy, or Peggy, or Hank, the bathing beauty? No. Do you think Have I you... should question Hank? He's probably already skipped. Come on in, Hank. Miss Allen is representing Mr. Crane. He thinks I should question you. Well, that's okay with me, but I can't tell you anything about Marcia, or Mrs. Crane. I only worked for her. Satisfied? Did your job include getting an occasional kiss or two? That kiss you saw didn't mean a thing. She was just kidding. Ask him about the ones I didn't see. In the dark room. I don't know what she's talking about. Bet you don't. Well, I think I'll leave you two alone. See you later. Sit down. Hello, Paul. Chris, how are you? Fine. Let's send for you? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm very anxious to talk to him. Uh, I can't believe this whole thing is real. It's so awful. It's real enough for Bill. You uh, saw the letter, I suppose. Makes me look like pretty much of a heel, doesn't it? Bill explained that he had asked for it. Just the same if I hadn't shown it to him, he probably wouldn't be in this mess. Wish I could help him. Do you mean that? Of course. Well, could you give me the key to Marsha's apartment? Uh, I'm representing Bill, and I'd like to go up there and do a little investigating on my own tonight. I... I had to get into the studio sometimes when she wasn't there. Oh, well, sure, I understand it. Thanks a lot. See you later, Paul.
Miss Allen. You're a little late, Jonesy. I found it first. I, I think you ought to put that gun down. Uh, don't you come near me. Don't you... Open this door. Let me out of here. You keep away from that door, Jonesy, or I'll shoot through it. Then do you know where I can find Mr. Ashton? Thanks. I'll try his apartment. Don't take another step, Jonesy. I'll shoot if I have to. Gee, I'm sorry to see you in this fix, Miss Allen. I never thought of you as a killer. You don't have to shoot me. I'll keep my mouth shut. Huh? What? Why don't you give me that gun? Uh, that's far enough. All right, stay where you are. Don't move. Put that gun down, lady. Oh. Oh, I found it here. I think it's the gun that killed Mrs. Crane. And I think there's the man who used it. He came back after it, found me here, and tried to kill me, too. She's crazy. She found the gun. I didn't. He came right to the dark room where it was hidden. And found you there first. Oh, Les. Oh, Les. I was so scared. I tried to call you, but it was Jonesy. He tried to kill me. But you weren't too frightened to come here in the first place. She's Mr. Crane's attorney. Oh. Huh? Now, what's this all about? Well, this dame, I'm, this lady, I mean this attorney, said she came here and found that gun. This guy tried to take it away from her and kill her. I thought she was trying to kill me. I can understand that. I've seen that same look in her eye. Exactly where did you find this? In the developing tank. I figured Jonesy must have thrown it there after killing Marcia. Then he came back tonight, intending to get it and hide it in some better place. I never saw that gun before in my life. Then what did you come in here for tonight? To pick up some photographs that have to go on to the engravers. Uh, Mr. Marvin phoned me about them this evening. Didn't it occur to you to ask the police for permission to come in here and remove anything? Well, I, I guess it wasn't very bright. All right, get your pictures. Thanks. Are you going to accept his story just like that? Not necessarily. Now let's hear your explanation. Mine? Yes. Well, I, I told you I just came in. I mean in your explanation for being here. How did you get in? I borrowed a key from Paul Marvin. Why? Well, I had a hunch that your investigators had overlooked something, and I was right, wasn't I? And I'd be right if I treated you like any other meddler and let these boys lock you up for breaking in here. Lock me up? Well, for Pete's sakes, that's gratitude. Well, here, I, I show you evidence that your house-wrecking crew overlooked and deliver a number one suspect right into your hands, and, and what do you say? You shouldn't have done it. These are the ones I came after. All right. Now give me your keys to the studio. Then you can go along. But stay where I can find you if I want you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Miss Allen, I'm sorry you think I wanted to hurt you. Oh, that's quite all right, Jonesy. Better luck next time. Uh, all right, boys. You can go back across the hall. Oh, yes. You take this along. And if anybody else tries to get in here, don't bother to call me. Just take them down to headquarters. Okay, Mr. Ashton. You knew I was here all the time. That's right. And you knew that Jonesy came in after me. Naturally. And you left me here alone with him so that he'd have plenty of time to murder me if he wanted to. Yes. Why, of all the... Of course, I was uh, moderately sure that he didn't want to kill you. Oh, Les, I have never... Let me go now, you... But I still think you're being pig-headed about Jonesy. No, I'm not. I've had a tail on him for two days, just in case. And now, do you want to look around some more? No, no, I certainly don't want to be left here alone. I didn't think you would. Come on. Wait until I make sure the back door is locked. Then I'll take you home. conspicuous and more pleasant for you if we talked here, rather than in my office. I didn't figure you were dating me. 
But I sure appreciate you not having the cops drag me down for questioning. I saw no reason for it. You're not very high up on my list of suspects. <sighs> Ever wear false fingernails? Oh, no. Well, I mean, that is not all the time. I guess all women wear them sometimes when they break a nail or something. Why'd you ask that? No particular reason. I thought you wanted to talk about Mrs. Crane. I do. How did you feel about her? I hated her. Enough to kill her? Well, I haven't been in mourning since it happened. But I didn't do it. I told you you weren't one of my better suspects. The false fingernail. What's it got to do with it? Where'd they find it? Did they find one? Well, I thought you no, said... No, I didn't say it. I just asked if you ever wore them. Oh. Getting back to your feelings about Mrs. Crane and the reason for them. How long have you known Hank? Oh, a little more than three years. Hank and I are married, you know. I know that. Although Hank didn't bother to mention it. Well, we kept it quiet for business reasons. Happy? Why, certainly. When was the last time you saw Mrs. Crane? About uh, noon of the day she was killed. I was working in the studio. You didn't see her that evening? No. Some woman was there. Oh. I'm sorry. It's all right. I was about to say some woman was there. That woman could help us if she would. Or she can wait too long and go to jail. Hello, Chris. Peggy. Hello. How cozy. Mind if we sit down? I was uh, looking for a nice, quiet place to have dinner, and uh, I guess I took a wrong turn someplace and walked right into a tea party. Oh, sit down, Paul. Oh. Sure, sit down. It's open house today. So this is why you want to come here. Now, don't blame me, Les. She not only told me I was taking her to dinner, but where I was taking her. If you'll excuse me, I I've got an appointment. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. I don't think he's very happy to see me, do you, Paul? I never wanted to see you less than at that moment. Peggy was about to unburden her soul to me. Oh, I'm sorry I interrupted. It's okay. <laughs> what about the gun? I was telling Paul about how I found... I think you're doing a good job for your client. He's very lucky to have you. I wish I could say the same thing, Chris. Why? What's happened? When you found that gun, you practically put a rope around Bill's neck. Our ballistics man reports it was Bill's gun and it fired the bullet that killed Marsha. What's this? Why are we stopping? Maybe I just want a neck. Maybe I don't. Oh, not you. Peggy lives here. Oh. Care? No. You stay here this time. I want to finish what you so rudely interrupted. Well, just send handsome Hank out to hold my hand. You can stay as long as you like. at your home. May I come in? Suppose I said no. There's always my office. Come in. I get home? No. He just left.
Yes? Oh, hello, Chris. No, he's not here. He called a cab and left. No, I don't know where he went. All right, Peggy. Thanks. He said he was going on to the Burgundy. What? Who's going on to the Burgundy? The chief. He checked in here by phone. He should be there in about 15 minutes. Oh, thanks a lot. And don't bother to tail me. No, Miss Allen. I won't. What do you want? About 22,500 bucks. $500 on the nose. Choice dealer in the fifth at Belmont. Not a bad bet. Insured for track odds. And it paid um, 45 to 1. I ought to know, having that much dough on it. Yeah, but the only thing wrong is you didn't have that much dough on it. What do you mean by that? I sold this ticket to Mrs. William Crane. Steve and I were wondering who'd bring it in. Well, now you know. She gave it to me. She did. <laughs> You're kind of pretty, but you don't look like 22,000 bucks worth to me. Does he to you, Steve? Never mind the wisecracks, Lacker. Okay. Only I'm not paying off on this. Oh, yes, you are. You know, it's going to hurt this lovely setup if people get the idea you knock off the big winners. You think I killed Mrs. Crane to keep from paying off, huh? That's what it adds up to, to me. You know, that makes you pretty dumb. Coming up here and asking for the same thing. I liked her a lot better than I do you. The only difference is a couple of people know where I am right now. I see. You figure you're in shape to go to the DA, huh? Well, you're in more trouble than I am. Because he'll think you killed her to collect on this ticket. Can you prove that? Can you prove she did? One thing I can prove, Lacker, is that I didn't kill her. Yeah? How? Because my wife was in the apartment when it happened, so she knows it wasn't me. Oh. You know, you shouldn't spread information like that around. Or don't you care about what happens to her? Not so fast, sister. Come on down here. It's a dame, boss. Bring her in.
Why, Miss Allen. Hello, Hank. Oh, you know her, huh? Say, I know you too. Didn't I meet you at Mrs. Crane's apartment? Your memory's all right. Yeah. Didn't that Crane woman have any friends that weren't nuts? She's more than Marsha's friend. She's the DA's girlfriend. Yeah? What are you doing around here? I followed Hank. From where? From wherever you came. Uh, and now, if uh, nobody cares, I think I'll be on my way. Yes, but I do care. You mean I can't leave? Oh, sure, sure. You can leave, Miss Allen. After I ask you a couple of things. Why are you tailing this guy? Because I'm Bill Crane's attorney. Okay, but why did you have to chase him in here? Now I've got to move this whole layout before you can go back and tell your boyfriend about it. You don't have to worry about me telling him anything, unless it's connected with the Crane case. That's all I'm interested in. I still think we've got to move. Better hang on to her a while. Kidnapping is a very serious charge, you know. Not if you don't find the corpus delicti, as you lawyers would say. Better take her upstairs for a while, Steve. And uh, keep an eye on her. Come on. Maybe she heard what we were talking about just before she came in. Maybe she did. <clears throat> but wait here. Wait here for what? The boss will let you know. It's too bad you didn't mind your own business instead of getting in the boss's way. Uh, I guess you're right. Say, uh, you don't suppose you and I could make a little deal, do you? You know. Uh-uh. Mm. Well... Oh! Oh, so what's the matter? You ain't getting a heart attack, are you? You mean you wouldn't go for a doctor for me? Well, it's no heart attack. It's just my foot it hurts. Well, uh, well, maybe I can get you a chair or something. Uh, no, I'll just take my shoe off. Uh, oh, muscle. Yeah, that's one thing I got. Now, you got plenty yourself. Uh, that's better. Would you mind putting my shoe back on for me? Oh, sure. Just give me a little footy. What you eating? Put it right in here. Oh. I wouldn't have waited if Paul hadn't been here to keep me company. Oh, I, I think this whole act is some trick just to make me buy your dinner. Oh, never mind about that. And I'll explain about the car later. Les, I found the motive for Marsha's murder. Good. What is it now? A $500 bet with a bookie, Johnny Lacker, on a horse that came in and paid 45 to 1. $22,500. Are you sure? Say, that's the bet Marsha made the day she was murdered. That's good news for Bill, isn't it? I hope so. You think Lacker killed her? Well, I'm not sure whether he did or Hank did. Hank? Somehow he got hold of the bookmaker's ticket and tried to cash it in. Say, where have you been? Oh, I'll tell you all about it later. But first, we've got to get out to Peggy's. She was in Marsha's apartment. Yeah, she intimated as much. But she didn't tell you that she saw the killer, did she? Who said she did? Hank did. Did anyone else hear him say that? Several people. Then we better hurry. I'll call the office first and tell them to pick up Johnny Lacker. <sighs> Well, as long as I'm going to be deserted, I think I'll wander on. All right, Paul. Excuse me, Chris. Good night. See you soon. Oh, Paul! Paul! I... Mac, I want you to pick up Johnny Lacker. I don't know where you'll find him. What's that? Well, I'll be. I'll check with you later. What's the matter? Johnny Lacker walked into the office ten minutes ago and gave himself up. Said he figured after your visit I'd want to talk to him. That sounds funny. It is funny. It's also a good alibi. Alibi for what? For anything that's about to happen. Come on, you can give me the rest of that story on the way. Well, everything seems quiet.
dear. Peggy! Oh, you're back. Peggy, you're all right. Well, of course I'm all right. Well, we were afraid that you... Afraid? Afraid of what? And say, what's the idea of breaking my house down? We were afraid you might have decided to leave town, Miss Allen was about to say. Leave? Why? I told you all I knew about the crane business. Not quite, Peggy. Not quite all. What do you think I left out? The minor point that you were there when the killing took place. Who says so? Never mind that. Better get dressed. I'm taking you along. On what kind of a rap? Well, it's this way, Peggy. Under the law, a wife can't testify against her husband. So I can't use you to convict Hank. But if you were along with Hank when he killed her, that makes you equally guilty. You're going to try and tag this on Hank? Right. Oh, no, you're not. Hank wasn't even there. I couldn't tell you I was there before without incriminating myself. But all right, now you can have it. I did go there to have it out with that crane dame about Hank. I don't know what I intended to do, but... It doesn't really matter because someone did it first. Who did it, Peggy? Who was it, Peggy? It was... Take it easy or I'll break your neck. I didn't know it was you, Mr. Ashton. Oh, hey. Give me your gun. Gun? I haven't got a gun. Look, I didn't fire that shot. And what were you doing out here? I just came home. I heard the shot in the yard and thought I saw someone. That's oh, the truth, good. Mr. Ashton. Good, you got him. How was Peggy? Peggy? What's the matter with Peggy? She's dead. I just called the coroner. Good morning, Chris. Hello, Les. Oh, didn't you even go to bed? No. Well, how's it look this morning? Confusing. Utterly confusing. I've been through every bit of evidence we have, and I get exactly nowhere. What about Hank? The boys went over every inch of that house and yard. If Hank shot her, he swallowed the gun. No, if I were drawing my suspects out of a hat, I'd draw Laka, not Hank. You said Laka was here in your office. A man like that doesn't do his own dirty work. Well, at least Bill is in the clear. On Peggy's death. But Les, whoever killed Peggy must have killed Marcia, too. Not necessarily. Oh, that's ridiculous. Wait a minute, Chris. I think the two killings are related, too, but I have no proof of it. I established a pretty sound motive of jealousy in Marcia's death. Peggy could have been killed over this race bet payoff. It complicates things. But Peggy was just about to name Marcia's killer. Didn't you ask Hank who did it? Peggy certainly must have told him. Hank says she didn't know who it was. Oh, well, he's lying. Why, I heard Laka tell him myself. Says he was only bluffing Laka. That Peggy didn't know who it was. Or didn't tell him if she did. Well, what about Laka? Naturally, he's lying himself black in the face, trying to cover his bookie racket. I've never run into so many accomplished liars in my life before. And don't tell me to use the lie detector oh, because no, I... Oh, no, no. I was just about to suggest letting me use it, unofficially. On whom? On everybody connected with the case. Les, I've got an idea. We'll throw a party at Marsh's for everybody. With the lie detector as the floor show. I'll guarantee that Bill will submit to it, and then nobody else will dare refuse. Might do some good. With you operating it, what can I do to help? Well, just see that Bill and Hank and Lack are there. I'll get Anna and Jonesy and everybody else that Martian knew. Won't they be suspicious if you invite them? Well, the newspapers don't know how Peggy was killed, do they? No, I kept out all the details. Well, then it's perfect. Betty. Yes? Betty, get me Paul Marvin on the phone. Yes? Oh, Chris, how are you this morning? Yes, I read about Peggy. It must have been terrible. But at least it clears Bill, doesn't it? Oh, I see. Seems like Les is being a little stubborn, huh? What? A party. At Marsh's. But why? Oh, I see. What do you want me to do? 
Okay, I'll call them and meet you there tonight at 8. Sure. Goodbye. Please. Certainly, Miss Allen. Thank you. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Miss. me half to death. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just wandering around the place and I didn't know you were here. Well, I didn't know you were here either. I nearly fainted. It's only 7.30. I didn't expect you till 8. I thought it was a good chance to come early and spend a little time among the things Marsha liked. Yes, I understand, Paul. I'm sorry I have to be here. Oh, that's all right. You were one of the things she'd like most. Have any trouble getting people to come up here tonight? Not at all. Probably be millions by 8. So what's this? It's a lie detector. We're going to play questions and answers. We expect this machine to tell us who killed Marsha. Oh, I see. You seem to understand the thing, huh? Yes, operating it was my job in the office. That's why I came up a little early tonight, to set it up. Is it in working order now? Mm, I think so. I'll have to test it a bit. How are you going to test it? How do you think? Oh. <laughs> You're the guinea pig. Mine? Not at all, if it doesn't hurt. <laughs> no. Take off your coat, Paul. That's right. Sit down now. First, we strap you in. Roll up your left sleeve, huh? Sure. Yep. This records your blood pressure. And this, you're breathing. My goodness. It's quite a contraption, isn't it? Mm. Excuse me. And now, this, your perspiration. Simple, huh? That's well, a danger to a criminal, I suppose. Aren't the simple things supposed to be the ones that trap them? So I've heard. Actually, this registers the chemical and emotional reactions of your body. Oh. Here we go. Now then. What's it tell you now? It tells me that you're a remarkably calm man, Mr. Marvin, with not the faintest idea of a lie in your head. <laughs> that machine reads me like a book. It's sort of a mechanical crystal ball, huh? That's right. Wait till I get my notebook. Suppose you could find lost relatives, sheep, dogs, or forecast the stock market with it. You'd be surprised. Want a demonstration? Why not? Tell me where my Uncle Jasper is. Do you have an Uncle Jasper? Why, of course. My uncle's name is Charles. That's better. Now I'll show you how powerful this thing really is. Think hard, Paul. Have you lost anything very valuable to you recently? Oh, say, within the last 24 hours? I don't think so. Like a cigarette case, for instance? Well, I haven't got the cigarette case that Marcia gave me. Maybe I could help get it back for you. But I didn't lose it. It reminded me too much of Marcia. I gave it away. Well, I guess that's enough until the others get here. Kind of a silly gadget, isn't it? You have that cigarette case, haven't you, Chris? 
Yes. You left it at the Burgundy house. Well, last night, of course. Oh, I shouldn't have lied about it. But it seems so stupid to lose something I like so much that I... Well, I was embarrassed. It's unimportant anyway. Shall we take these things off and wait for the other? Oh, no, let's go on. How about some of the things you're going to ask Bill and Hank? Oh, just routine questions and stuff. Routine? How about the trick you mentioned? What is it? Trick? Yeah. Oh. oh, you'll see later. Oh, let's do it now. Then you can tell Les that I've already passed my examination with flying colors. Well, all right, but... Well, it's getting kind of late. Oh, well, they won't be here for 20 minutes yet. We have plenty of time to kill. All right. We generally start out with a series of words. Words? Yes. Most of them will be just padding. But some will have a reference to Marsha's and Peggy's deaths. When I say a word, you're supposed to answer with whatever word comes into your head. Oh, I see. If I don't say the first word I think of, this thing will tell you so, is that it? That's right. Huh. It's interesting. Go ahead. But... Oh, wait. What are you nervous about? Well, I... Nervous? I'm not nervous. Go ahead. Sure. Arson. Fire. Burglary. Jewels. Beautiful. Marsha. Horse. Races. Burgundy house. Peggy. What made you think of Peggy? Well, uh... You and Les were speaking about her in there last night, you remember? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Chair. Sit. Newspaper. Story. Window. Peggy. Peggy? What's the matter? Did I say something wrong? How did you know Peggy was killed through a window? Well, I don't know. I guess I read it in the newspaper. It was in the papers, wasn't it? Yes, I suppose so. It's an amazing machine, Chris. I feel fortunate I've had a preview with just you and me here alone. Shall we let it go at that until the rest of the guests arrive? Are you going to ask me if I killed Peggy and Marcia? No. You don't have to, do you? Kind of silly, don't you think? You won't get as far as the door, Chris. Didn't I say it was always the simple things that trapped a person? Sit down. You. You killed Marsh and Peggy. And we never even considered you. Peggy was incidental. Only because she saw me here. She didn't matter. Killing Marsha was something I had to do. You understand, Chris, I had to. She told me she was going back to Bill. I'm sorry, Chris, that you have to join them. Why do you want to kill me? It gives me one more chance. It's instinct, Chris, to want to hang on to life as long as you can. You're insane, Paul, insane. Perhaps. Paul, he killed them both. I know. Cloth on a nail at Peggy's matched a torn suit of his. We found it only an hour ago. That's why I came here early. So we finally caught somebody with that thing. I'd like to finish the job. I can't let you do that, Bill. Chris wants to prosecute him. I don't want to prosecute anything, ever. Except maybe a pan of bride's biscuits. 